And I'm here with uh, Professor Jonathan Sarna, the American Jewish historian at Brandeis and the president of the Association for Jewish Studies, among many other things. And we're here to have a short conversation about some of your work and, and your interests. So just to start, what, what excites you or animates you most about, about American Jewish history, about American Jewish life? The story of American Jews is the story of a community that learns how to exist under freedom. Uh, you know, there were plenty of people who thought, some still think, oh, without persecution, Jews will disappear. They'll assimilate, and some do. But nevertheless, we've now gone um, more than three centuries under, um, under freedom, and the uh, Jews are still here. Uh, I think the idea that we have been able to uh, create a voluntary Jewish community and find ways for uh, people voluntarily to decide to come, nobody's coerced. These are remarkable. Mm -hmm. A lot of people thought uh, it couldn't happen. Uh, and yet, notwithstanding the fact that every generation worries it will be the last, mm -hmm. we're somehow still mm -hmm. here. Beautiful. So in addition to survival, do you think we fulfilled our larger mission in America? Over the last few centuries, the notion of being an or the goyim or a light unto, in this case, the nation. Do you think that, that Jews have played a significant role in influencing the American culture? I think so. First of all, I think America would be a very different place had it not been for Jews. Uh, for most of American history, Jews were the most significant non-Christian religious minority, and that in itself helped to ensure that America was more religiously pluralistic. Um, I think in addition to that, um, um, you know, most of the world... Uh, believed uh, in some kind of deal. We'll emancipate Jews, but they have to change. America said, no. Jews uh, get their rights along with everybody else. Um, and uh, George Washington calls them inherent natural rights. They can't be taken away. Um, so we don't have the Enlightenment emancipation uh, kind of situation is known in Europe, and look how Jews flourished in America. That, I think, was enormously important. And I do think that, that um, many in America know that there have been critical moments when the Jewish community has um, uh, strived to help other people. Uh, whether it's the civil rights movement or the poor, uh, I, uh, I have certainly heard from politicians. Everybody else, they say, comes to us seeking something for themselves. And then there were Jews who often were seeking something for uh, the least fortunate in the community. Mm -hmm. And that made uh, an impact. Governor Richards of Texas never forgot it. Mm. Uh, and I think um, in all those ways, mm. Jews shaped America. It's a fascinating point. You know, when you're outsiders, you're in touch with others on the margins who are outsiders. The challenge today is I see it as insiders. How do we keep the identity of being outsiders where we're still in touch with margins mm. and don't view ourselves as just sort of white Americans? Um, so I, I, from an academic perspective, how would you say that, uh, that American Jewish studies, or just Jewish studies, have evolved over the last 20, 30 years? Well, Jewish studies almost didn't exist on American campuses until the 1960s. And uh, you had a few, one person at Columbia, one at Harvard, but basically it was not seen as an appropriate university subject. And today, the vast majority of universities have Jewish studies programs, and there is a sense that uh, Jewish studies is no less significant as an academic uh, discipline uh, than um, uh, all other kinds of studies. Uh, it, indeed, it's in many ways surprising 
that you could study um, uh, Western civilization for so long in America without somebody dealing with Jews as if they weren't part of Western civilization, but so it was. Today, uh, Jewish studies uh, has grown enormously. The Association for Jewish Studies founded, which I happen to be the president of, and which was founded... Um, uh, in the 1970s, with fewer than 100 members, uh, today has over 2,000 members. Right. And I, I think uh, that has even had an impact on uh, our individual communities. Once upon a time, a great many Jews had a sophisticated understanding of the world, which they got in college, and a pediatric understanding of Judaism, because they quit at age 13. Mm -hmm. Today... Um, we know that the majority of young Jews take at least one course in Jewish studies during their university careers, and that means they get a sophisticated understanding of Jews and Judaism, uh, and non-Jews get the same sophisticated understanding. Many non-Jews take those courses, and that's very important, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I know you like to study the past and don't like to be in the role of prophet, but if you were to anticipate in 30 to 50 years from now, what will Jewish historians find most significant about our era? What do you think is happening now in our generation that will inevitably be of historical significance? As you point out, prophecy is very difficult, right. especially about the future. And if we went back, say, uh, uh, 60, 70 years ago, nobody would have predicted today. Nevertheless... It seems to me we are living through one of the great revolutions in human history with the internet um, and the revolution wrought by computer technology um, and, and new modes of communication, and that really is changing everything. And it's changing Judaism as well. Uh, you know, when I was young, we went to synagogue in part to see our friends. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, you can get on Facebook. You don't have to uh, mm -hmm. uh, go anywhere. Um, uh, Judaism will certainly have to change in response to this technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we changed greatly with the invention of printing, so much so that it's hard to remember Judaism without printing. I am certain Judaism will rise to the challenge, but it will take time, and the seeds of the innovations that are necessary are being planted now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, I know this is a topic you could speak about for hours, but there's been a lot of buzz about your recent book, Lincoln and the Jews, and I wonder just briefly, what kind of drew you towards Lincoln and investing so much in, in, that, in that era? Um, first of all, I think it's important important for American Jews to know that they're part of American history. Uh, it's not somebody else's history. Uh, and much of my work has been devoted to reminding Americans about the place of Jews mm -hmm. and reminding Jews that they've been part of America. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case of Lincoln, um, 16,000 books about Lincoln, and initially when Mr. Chappelle approached me, I, I was a little dubious. But the truth is that the Jewish aspects of Lincoln's life and career, uh, his significance for broadening America so that Jews are insiders here rather than outsiders, and the significance of that for America as a whole has not sufficiently being appreciated. Uh, had we had somebody else in the White House at that time, and um, uh, the chaplaincy hadn't been changed, so Jews would be second-class citizens and, and excluded, uh, and when General Grant expelled Jews from his war zone that hadn't been overturned, the whole history of America would be different. Uh, instead, Lincoln not only put himself out for Jewish rights, uh, but Lincoln viewed Jews as insiders, 
uh, indeed, I think, in, to some extent, he saw these two persecuted peoples, blacks and Jews, mm -hmm. as being uh, brought in, and, and that's pretty astonishing. And um, Lincoln is remarkable in that the private Lincoln is every bit as good as the public Lincoln. Mm -hmm. When I read his letters, there isn't a difference between the private man and the public man. We say in Hebrew, tocho kavoro. Uh, the inner person mm -hmm. was the same as what you saw. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't always been true even of American presidents, after all. But it is true of Lincoln. And America was fortunate to have had him as its president. And Jews were fortunate uh, that he had Jewish friends and uh, that repeatedly uh, he put himself out on Jews' behalf. Beautiful. Lastly, what, what, uh, what's next for you? What are some of your other intellectual ambitions well, that you want to pursue? At this very moment, I'm trying to write a new chapter mm -hmm. for a new edition of, of a, my history of American Judaism to talk about uh, all that's happened really since uh, the turn of the millennium. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and a lot has happened. Um, uh, there are whole subjects uh, uh, that need to be considered, everything from the gay rights movement, which mm -hmm. has had a big impact on a Jewish life, to the economic downturn, to transformations in different Jewish religious movements. And I'm trying to see if that can be summed up in a rather brief chapter. Um, uh, after that, I think I'd like to do something quite different. I've been interested in some time in a very little-known uh, 19th century Jewish woman poet named Cora Wilburn, mm. not in any book. Um, and I thought perhaps I would take uh, some time to bring that material together, show why it's significant, and how in some ways it changes the normal way we think about 19th century American Jews. Fantastic. Well, I uh, encourage you to read some of the hundreds of scholarly articles that Professor Sarno has written, certainly American Judaism, his book on Grant, and the most recent, Lincoln and the Jews. Thank you so much, Professor Sarno. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you.